Hello students, let us today see motor skills disorder or developmental coordination disorder. Developmental coordination disorder is diagnosed when children do not develop normal motor coordination. That's the coordination of movements involving the voluntary muscles. And developmental coordination disorder is usually first recognized when a child fails to reach such normal developmental milestones as walking or beginning to dress him or herself. Functional difficulties manifested by such children may include poor fine motor skills such as motor graphic proficiency, manual dexterity, tool use and or gross motor abilities such as walking, running or jumping. Some children may have difficulties in both the areas of fine motor as well as gross motor skills whereas other might have one of the two. Posture and balance may also be impaired in children affected with developmental coordination disorder and there may be difficulties with learning motor skills and delays in attaining motor milestones. Component aspects of coordinated movement such as the regulation of timing and force have also been found to be impaired. And children with DCD often have difficulty performing tasks that involve both large and small muscles including forming letters when they write, throwing or catching balls, or fastening buttons, etc. The terminology used to describe the difficulties of such children has been broad ranging from the essentially descriptive terms like physically awkward and clumsy child syndrome to terms implying causality such as minimal brain dysfunction and minor neurological dysfunction. Additionally, there are terms such as developmental dyspraxia or sensory integrative dysfunction which reflects the attempts to place the problem in a specific sphere of cognitive operations though there is little evidence of its widespread use. Collier has described developmental coordination disorder as congenital maladroitness and A. John Eyre referred to DCD as a disorder of sensory integration in 1972. In 1975, Dr. Sesan Gebe called it the clumsy child syndrome. Other names such as developmental apraxia, disorder of attention and motor perception, motor learning difficulties, perceptual motor dysfunction, etc. have been used. However, the World Health Organization currently list developmental coordination disorder a specific developmental disorder of motor function. Let us now see the prevalence of the disorder in the general population. It's generally observed to be around 4 to 7 percent and as with any other developmental disorders Poor coordination is more prevalent in boys than in girls with the estimated ratio varying from around 2 is to 1 to as high as 4 is to 1 depending on the method of recruitment. APA also suggests a figure of around 6% for the age range 5 to 11 years. The disorder is basically believed to be neurological in origin and has its basis in the brain which in itself is a network of neural connections that allows human to process the information received and DCD is a result of weak or disorganized connection in the brain. Movements are performed because the brain sends messages to the area requiring action. DCD therefore is a result of a poorly structured neural pathways to the moving parts of the body. It could even have its origin in the vestibular system of the inner ear. The vestibule is an organ that is responsible for uh, maintaining balance and coordination and is located beside the cochlea which acts as a sound receptor. Though they attend to different information, the proximity of the two complement each other. So the other consequence of their relationship is that if one system is not functioning well, the other would also be concurrently affected. And people with developmental coordination disorder also tend to have an overly sensitive tactile system that might cause them to perceive the most benign touch as unpleasant. They may also have a very low pain threshold or have an automatic reaction of fear that is tactile defensiveness when touched. 
and this could be the result of a sensory processing disorder which describes the problem in the way the brain interprets information received from the senses. Therefore, these problems like that of coordination originates in the vestibule as all sensory information is transmitted to the vestibule before being sent to the cerebellum, the part of the brain that is associated with movement. So, generally the cause is believed to lie in the vestibule organ of the inner ear. However, the exact cause of the disorder is not known and symptoms of the disorder could include general unsteadiness and slight shaking and at muscle tone that is below normal and the inability to produce written symbols or there could be problems in visual perception related to the development of eye muscles and developmental coordination disorder would also of course include the inability to move smoothly as in the person may not be able to follow the sequence of movements involved in any activity and this disorder is mostly observed in combination with other neurodevelopmental disorder. For example, in the Canadian population study, 23% of children has shown signs of DCD, 8% has met the criteria for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and 19% were categorized as dyslexic and nearly 25% of the affected children have been found to have all the three disorder while 10% had both ADHD and DCD and 22% had dyslexia and DCD. Therefore, DCD is mostly observed to be in combination with other disorders. Further, summaries highlighting overlap with other conditions have recently been published including uh, work by Adib and Kirby who have both shown an association between motor difficulties and joint hypermobility syndrome. And over the last 15 years, an overlap of DCD with other conditions has also been demonstrated including reading, attention and motor deficits, social and emotional disturbance including anxiety and depression, speech and language impairment, social and communication impairment. When we come to see a diagnosis how it is done for DCD, a diagnosis of dyspraxia can be made by a clinical psychologist, an educational psychologist, a pediatrician or an occupational therapist. Any parents who suspects that their children may have dyspraxia should first see their general practitioner or primary care physician or a special needs coordinator. And when carrying out an assessment, details will be required regarding the child's developmental history, intellectual ability and the gross and fine motor skills. Gross motor skills as I have already said refers to how well the child uses his or her large muscles that coordinate body movement. For example, that includes jumping, running, walking and maintaining balance. Uh, whereas fine motor skills refers to how well the child can use his or her small muscles that are responsible for activities uh, like tying shoelaces, doing up buttons, cutting out shapes with a pair of scissors and writing etc. The assessor will need to know when and how developmental milestones such as walking, crawling, speaking were reached and the child will be screened for balance, touch sensitivity and variations on walking activities. There is a new coordination and uh, handwriting test which identifies the DCD that could also identify the teenagers who need extra help at secondary school and college. Let us now see how the assessment is done for developmental coordination disorder. Children with DCD are assessed in a variety of ways, but currently there is no appropriate uh, good standard assessment instrument and no instrument that goes from child to adulthood. In many countries however, the movement ABC battery is most widely used which contains a standardized normative reference test plus a criterion reference checklist and other instruments such as Bruning's Osiretsky test of motor proficiency are used with various forms of evaluations. Other instruments such as Bruning's Osiretsky test of motor proficiency are used with various forms of evaluations being made based on a variety of criteria. 
ICD-10 lists the disorder as a specific developmental disorder of motor function as I've said, but this term is not in widespread use. Developmental coordination disorder is a term that is adopted by the American Psychiatric Association and is the one in preference in the research literature. The American Psychiatric Association and the World Health Organization both have inclusive and exclusive criteria in the definition. For APA, the inclusive criteria include impairment in the development of motor coordination, which can be manifest in delays in milestones such as standing and walking, poor performance in sports activities, and untidy handwriting. This impairment leads to a disturbance in academic performance and or activities of daily living. Exclusive criteria include the disturbance not being due to a general medical difficulty such as cerebral palsy or a pervasive developmental disorder. And in addition, if mental retardation is present, the motor difficulties are in excess of those usually associated with it. The WHO definition overlaps with the APA definition by noting that on a standardized test of motor impairment, a child would score two standard deviations below the mean, accompanied by interference with academic performance and or activities of daily living. It notes that there should be no diagnosable neurological disorder and it excludes those with an IQ below 70. But despite the guidance provided by the APA and the WHO, there are still a number of issues surrounding the identification and definitions. The WHO recommendations that individuals with an IQ of 70 and below are excluded from the formal definition is the one that's agreed by most clinicians and researchers. Let us now see the prognosis and the outcome of this disorder. For many people, developmental coordination disorder lasts into adulthood. Through specialized attention and teaching techniques, it's possible over time for many children to develop the motor skills that they lack. Some children, however, never fully develop the skills they need, and although many can improve their motor skills significantly, in most cases, their motor skills will never match those of their peers at any given age and the outcome studies relating to DCD have been emerging since the 1980s. While early accounts suggested a good prognosis, testing was often done using the same test batteries as at the earlier age. Therefore, studies that have used more age-appropriate tasks with older children have been less optimistic. Not only do a substantial number of children continue to perform poorly on motor tasks, but they may be more at risk of educational underachievement in their teens than children without DCD. And teenagers with DCD are aware of their motor problems and rate themselves as poor on tasks requiring motor skills. They may be at risk of feeling socially excluded, a patterns that begin in early school years and may make them choose more solitary pursuits than other children. As yet, no lifespan developmental course for the disorder has been established. The longest reported follow-up study consists of a subtest of the children in the Gothenburg cohort, who were last reported on at the age of 22. However, only five of this group had motor impairments in the absence of an attentional disorder, and the motor outcome for the group was not fully recorded. But despite the lack of research into the persistence of uh, DCD into later teens and adulthood, it's not unusual for uh, medical and uh, educational professionals to make a retrospective diagnosis of DCD or developmental dyspraxia in adults presenting with a history consistent with a developmental motor impairment. And we have recently demonstrated that DCD can persist into adulthood and may have significant effects on an individual's quality of life. Like children with DCD, adults may show unusual slowness and variability of movement. Affected adults may also have difficulties acquiring complex motor skills such as driving and may be unable to gain employment in proportion with their qualifications because of the inability to learn occupation-specific skills. Let us now move to the prevention and the intervention part of the disorder. 
There is no known way to prevent developmental coordination disorder, although a healthy diet throughout pregnancy and regular prenatal care may help as they help to prevent many other disorders. And available remedial treatments for DCD form two categories, those aimed at remediating poor function and those at remediating a proposed underlying process deficit. For example, Treatments have been proposed on the assumption of kinesthetic deficit or of difficulties with sensory integration. While the remediation of some hypothesized deficit underlying DCD remains a laudable goal, the degree of heterogeneity among these children suggests that a process-oriented approach will be limited in its efficacy if applied over the whole range of motor disordered children. So often various coping strategies could be used and which could include occupational therapy, physiotherapy, speech therapy or psychological training. No treatment are known to work for all cases of developmental coordination disorder. So therefore experts recommend that a specialized course of treatment possibly involving work with an occupational therapist be drawn up to address the needs of each child. Many children can be effectively helped in special education settings to work more intensively on such academic problems as letter formation. For other children, physical education classes could be designed to improve their general motor coordination. With emphasis on skills, uh, the child can use in playing with uh, their peers and which could be very successful. Therefore, depending on the need of the child, intervention has to be adapted to help the child uh, do well in academics as well as extracurricular activity. And any kind of physical training that allows the child to safely practice motor skills and motor control would be greatly helpful. And the interventions could possibly take two approach, a process oriented approach and a task oriented approach. Process oriented or broad based, usually administered by health professionals, for example, occupational therapists or physiotherapists, and could include such methods as sensory integration therapy. And this could be aimed at pinpointing the underlying process or processes in which the child has not developed appropriately and which are thought necessary for successful performance and acquisition of motor skills. Thus the intervention for example would aim to improve the child's kinesthetic functioning with the aim of this transferring to the functioning of several motor skills. And task oriented approach is where they use a range of methods but all concentrate on tasks themselves. A significant set of this involve what have come to be called cognitive methodologies and success using this approach has been achieved with a range of children. The basis of these approaches is the interaction between the child's resources, the task to be learned and the context in which it is set. The task often determined through consultation with parents and the child is thought directly, sometimes broken down into components, parts and in a meta-analysis of different approach, the task-oriented ones have emerged at this time as more successful than the process-oriented one. And therefore, it could be implemented by pediatricians running children's services. It's important for children who have developmental coordination disorder to receive individualized therapy because for many children, the secondary problems that result from extreme clumsiness could be overwhelming. It can be very distressing. Children who have developmental coordination disorder often have problems playing with their peer group, playing with their friends because of an inability to perform the physical movement involved in any games and sports. So unpopularity with peers or exclusion from their activities can lead to low self-esteem as well as poor self-image. Therefore, the children may go to great lengths to avoid physical education classes and similar situation in which their motor coordination deficiencies may be noticeable. Therefore, treatment has to focus on skills that are useful on the playground or in the gymnasium and that could help to alleviate or prevent these problems.
and children with developmental coordination disorder also frequently have problems with writing letters and doing sums or performing other motor activities which are required in the classroom including coloring pictures, tracing designs or making figures from modeling clays. Therefore, these children may become frustrated by their inability to master tasks that their peer group finds easy and therefore may stop trying or become disruptive. Individualized programs designed to help each children's need and help them master the writing or skills required in arts and crafts may help them regain confidence and interest in classroom activities. Various areas of development can be affected by developmental coordination disorder and these will persist into adulthood as DCD has no cure. So in addition to the physical impairments, developmental coordination disorder is associated with problems with memory, uh, especially working memory. So affected people uh, might have difficulty in remembering instructions, difficulty organizing one's time and remembering deadlines, increased propensity to lose things or problems carrying out tasks which require remembering several steps in sequence and people with DCD also have difficulty moderating the amount of sensory information that their body is constantly sending them. So as a result, these people are prone to panic attacks. Having other autistic traits, which is common with developmental coordination disorder and related conditions, may also contribute to sensory induced panic attacks. And uh, as developmental coordination disorder can also cause problems with perception of distance and with the speed of moving objects and people. This can then cause problem moving in crowded places and crossing roads and can make learning to drive a car extremely difficult or impossible. So in this chapter, we have seen developmental coordination disorder in detail and we have seen that it refers to a heterogeneous group of disabilities affecting significant number of children and adults. Its etiology is not known, though adverse environmental factors at birth are implicated in some cases and a significant number of children with DCD do not outgrow their motor problems and some are at risk for social, emotional and educational difficulties in later life. And DCD can co-occur with a range of other developmental disorder such as dyslexia, ADHD. And at present, remediation attempts for the motor difficulties are most likely to be successful if they target specific areas of poor function and if they take into consideration the individual's needs and wants. Thank you.